Um, I think we'll start right now so we don't run too far behind the schedule. I, I hope you can hear me properly. So, I just wanted to present briefly what I've been doing with students, uh, seventh grade students, uh, in, in where I work. I uh, didn't print out my notes, so I'm going to kind of hope fully follow the script I have on the, on the present. Now, this is a seventh grade Wikimedia project, which means that the, the students I work with uh, on Wikimedia articles, or Wikipedia articles, are in seventh grade in Geneva. Being there right, 11 or 12 years old, the numbering system for the grades is roughly the same worldwide. Uh, the Geneva just changed their numbering system because the seventh grade became ninth grade. Uh, because they started mandatory schooling two years earlier, so the first two years of preschool became the first and second grade. So worldwide, you have the first grade, primary school is six years old, and in Geneva, it's already the third grade. It's just the way it is. And most of my students are French speakers. Uh, the school I teach in is uh, called the Collège de Colombien. Actually, do you, do you hear me all right like this? Without the loudspeaker. Is that okay? Even loudspeaker, that's no problem. Okay, so Collège de Colombia. A college is in uh, old French, is, is any school institution. And it means that in, in the French speaking part of Switzerland, a uh, college could be a primary school or a high school or a junior high school or a university. They're all collab. So where I work, it's a junior high school. The last three years of mandatory education, and the students are between like 12 and 15 years old. And it's a public school in, uh, in Geneva, or in the canton of Geneva. Uh, the city of Versoix is like about 10 kilometers down the lake from Geneva. Now, uh, back to this project, the first thing I have to say, I mean, just before coming to Wikimania, I had a meeting with the uh, with the head of the education department in Geneva, who allowed me to come and talk about what I do at school, and asked me to give a disclaimer saying that this is a project I do personally on my own time with the students, and it's not part of the official program in Geneva, and the education department does not want to be associated with it in any way. Okay, that's the disclaimer I have to give. And they allowed me to come, because otherwise, as teachers or as public servants, we, we can't have a legal injunction not to talk about what we do with, uh, you know, with, with the students. So, basically, this is my own initiative. Now, other people also, also are doing it. I mean, I know other colleagues who have worked with Wikipedia and with their students. When I, when I say work with it, I mean writing articles or editing articles. And most of those are in high school or, or, or college level. There has been some teacher training uh, related to Wikipedia editing. Meaning, I, I do teacher training for Wikipedia editing. I, I train teachers to, to work with their students with Wikipedia. But I know there have been other sessions run by other people who also do teacher training in, in that area. And, uh, well, I don't know what happens in the private schools. There are a lot of real expensive private schools in Switzerland. A lot of them use computers a lot. And maybe or maybe not, they also work with Wikipedia. And, uh, of course, you know, there's no real Swiss language. There are like four official languages in Switzerland. The German, French, Italian, and Romance. And I'm only talking about what happens on the French Wikipedia. In German Wikipedia, I imagine there's also plenty of things going on, but I, I'm not aware of them. Or in Italian. That's, uh, I mean, well, the way I see it is if I do things, I can't be the only one doing it. There must be more people doing it. So probably in German part of Switzerland and Italian. Now back to the, uh, the project that I do with the, the students, it's really related to helping them understand how the encyclopedia works and helping them understand um, how to use it. And also a little bit, you know, 
know, encourage them to contribute, but it's really mostly got to do with using the encyclopedia in the school or, or understanding the encyclopedia. Um, it's used a lot, and just not one of the, I mean, I'm talking about Geneva. It's not just one of the encyclopedias or Wikipedia. Geneva's very, very international. I don't know if you've already been there to Geneva. It's a very small city. It's like, actually, the official number is 190,000 inhabitants, okay? And there's roughly, in, in the student population and the schools, there's like 100, 120 different nationalities. and. Uh, a lot of different languages are spoken because we have a lot of diplomatic personnel and international corporations and the children of the employees, they go to the public school. So the languages that are spoken, there are like plenty of them, like French, German, English, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Croatian, Serbian, and so on, Arabic, and there's a lot of different languages spoken. And the students will, will do their lessons in French, but when they get back home, they communicate with other languages. And also, they look at Wikipedia and other languages. And what's interesting, actually, this is just a comment. A lot of the, the students, they use Wikipedia in their own language. They use Wikipedia in French. But they didn't know how to go between the languages. You know the interwiki links? There, there are very few users actually know how, how that works. I don't know what your experience is, but that's the students. A lot of them thought that they were totally different Wikipedias. They would go to the French one and they would close the browser and open it up again in Dutch or and close it again and open it up in French. And they didn't understand they could switch between the languages. Uh, but that's something for the development team to work on. It's not, uh, it's not our problem. Now what I teach, what I teach is an introductory course in computer science. And as part of this introductory course in computer science, I teach them how to use Wikipedia or the internet. It started out with the internet, actually. And the way I include it in what I have to officially do with the students you know, to fit the curriculum is when working on Wikipedia, we're touching all sorts of different uh, parts or elements of the curriculum, like using a word processor, uh, using the, the keyboard, the mouse, and things like that, and, and, and how to do references or citations or things like that when you produce uh, works with the computer, and there's the different copyright issues and plagiarism, and there's how to research information on the web, and, and how to really use search engines, and, and of course understanding Wikipedia. But all that is part of the official curriculum, and I just edit articles on Wikipedia to cover those parts of it, which is why I can do it, which is why the education department does not want me to say it's the official way to do it. So that's. Now, I, I've always worked with the students on, on understanding the, the web. I mean, but apart from the fact that the web started in Geneva, just like a few, a few kilometers from where I work, which is where the CERN is, um, I've always used it. And uh, the computers we have in school have always been connected to the web ever since uh, the beginning of the 1990s. You know? So I've been teaching this introductory course in computer science since uh, 87. 1987. I've been a user, internet user, since the beginning of the 80s. Uh, and uh, while I was building computers before, I went on the internet because, well, it's expensive to go on the internet. So I had to wait until I was in college and university where the connection was free. It was a lot easier that way. Anyway, I've been teaching this in, in, in school since 87. In the 1990s, home computers became more popular. They weren't very popular, they were just more popular with our students. And uh, when we were teaching computer science at schools, it was still heavily based on teaching using the logo language. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the logo language. Yeah. And basically, that's very useful in schools and stuff, but it's not very used at home by the, by the kids. But they didn't have computers at home anyway. They just used it in school. And we use the computers to do other things. It's not even so much using the computers. Uh, what was interesting, though, and even up to very recent years, is that the curriculum, or the way to teach computer science to, to, to students, has not changed 
since when I started in 1987. And, well, the, I, I, I personally believe things have changed. But the way we are supposed to teach them has not changed. Because in, in education, you know what it's like. It's very traditional, very hard to change things. Once they start in a certain way, you just can't change it. Okay? So I, I do a lot of things using the web. I do a lot of things using, but they're not. It's kind of like on the, the gray zone. It's like on the curriculum, not on the curriculum. Most teachers just teach your kids how to write, how to spell, how to write letters, how to put a two centimeter margin, how to put a frame around the picture, or a three centimeter frame, or you know, that kind of very, well, I don't know. I don't find it very interesting. So, um, when I started out in the 90s, well, no, middle of the 90s, I would say, the, the students started using the, the web an awful lot because they had to write reports and things like that, so they would just sit at the computer and they'd print out whole websites, you know, dozens of pages, just print and print and print, and use that to write their reports. And they, they tended to be, have absolutely no critical view of what they found on the internet, meaning they found anything, they would print it out, and they would think it was a proof, it was, it was truth, because it was on the internet, and you know, people put it there, so the only people who can put it there are, are people who are in positions of power, so everything you see is true. And that's that's the strong belief. And so I basically, I'm not saying I was debunking, but I was trying to get them used to, to being critical. And that's how I did it. I had them create web pages, that way they're critical of what's on the internet. And um, after a while, beginning of the year 2000, I stopped and then in 2000, four or five, I forget the dates exactly, I started using Wikipedia instead because the students use Wikipedia a lot for reference material. And I started having the same problem, meaning, I said I had the problem because I'm also in charge of the computer labs at school. And when the students print out hundreds of pages of text, I'm the guy who has to get the, the, the paper, and I'm the guy who has to change the toner and the printer, and you know, so it's a problem for me. Anyway. They, they also need to know how to use uh, Wikipedia. And the way to do it, the way for them to understand how Wikipedia works, the best way is for them to start writing one or two articles or, or editing. Even if they don't do much, they edit a little bit and they find out um, how it works. Uh, because in spite of it all, that is now the primary source of information for students. Uh, I think worldwide is Wikipedia as a primary source of information. Uh, and the way I did, I simply, well, I tried, started by trying to adapt the procedures I was using for creating web pages with the students. Like the, the websites, I started creating websites with my students in 95 about, 96, and I thought, well, maybe with Wikipedia it works the same way. So we would choose a subject for the whole class, every student would do a little bit of the subject that we chose, and then we'd put it all together and, and, and change the article. And what happened, it wasn't very successful. And the students thought it was a bit boring in the end because uh, it didn't work the same way as with web pages. So then I changed a little bit and I tried a more individual approach. I mean, keeping, I also kept the same login for the whole class and I said, okay, well now everybody chooses a different subject and we'll just edit using the same login. And that was also, not very smart, it was less successful because, well, for one, it goes against the uh, Wikipedia recommendations, which is a single login for a single user. When the whole class was working on a single subject, we could pretend we were just one user. That was okay. But when we started having different subjects, all with the same login, it, it didn't work very well for the recommendations, and it was very difficult for me to keep track of the individual progress of the different students. So I tried that for a year or two and I gave that approach up. Now, what I have been done recently in the past few years is uh, each student has his own account on Wikipedia. And, uh, well, I don't know what it's like in your countries, but in Geneva it took a little bit of discussion with the education department because they have very extremely strict uh, 
rules about creating accounts on uh, on online service providers for students. And uh, we've had this these regulations set up, meaning, for example, one of the rules is that all all uh, internet-related accounts connected with uh, Geneva students, the data centers and the data has to be physically stored on in the canton of Geneva. We can't use cloud computing with our with our students, and the, this has been for the past I don't know six seven years. Have been basically regulations saying that the data has to be stored on Geneva servers for for the computer use by students. And one of the reasons that was given out is because they didn't want to have any snooping done by foreign uh, government agencies. Now this is, I guess, a bit of uh, recognition on their part, because five years ago they didn't want the NSA spying in the students' emails. I mean, and um, so basically I had to really talk it over with them and to work out a system where the students could create accounts on Wikipedia that were totally anonymous and not connected to them in any way. So, uh, the advantage of actually having personal accounts per student is that I could have track what they're doing a lot easier on, on, on the internet and, and intervene straight away if they start uh, doing vandalism or things like that, which they tend to do in schools, which is why most school IPs are banned from, uh, from Wikipedia. And uh, that way we can get around it. And, I personally was able to get an account creator status on the French Wikipedia because uh, when I start class, I have to create like 20 accounts at once, and that's just not possible. Uh, it's like uh, three or four accounts or six accounts per day per IP or something like that. Anyway, the, I also created a page to keep track of what they were doing and tried to add a tag or a, a banner on every student's user page so people could see that they're a student with a class project. And um, where I was planning on going from now, well, to go on, there's a, a really neat educational tool on the English Wikipedia to help uh, educators on the English Wikipedia. And I wanted to see if I could translate that into French. And then the other, the other thing I really want to work on is contributing and, and accessing Wikipedia using mobile devices. Um, there, the students use a lot of mobile devices, and I really would like to, to work with them on, on accessing Wikipedia on mobile devices. You know, teach them how to do it. The only problem is, at least in Geneva, is that mobile devices are just totally banned in school. And so that needs a bit, of, uh, a bit more talking with the school uh, administration and so on, and seeing how we could go about letting uh, students use mobile devices in class. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in, in any case in Geneva, they're even talking about um, maybe putting in certain uh, classrooms having a blocking device for, 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 for mobile phones. Anyway, in the future, I'd like to be able to use Wikipedia on mobile phones for the students. And um, there are also Similar applications. I've also used the same method in, in other uh, areas where I where I uh, work, like teacher training. I've been doing teacher training, meaning I'm teaching my colleagues how to use Wikipedia with their own students. Uh, I have very little feedback on that. I don't know if they've actually used Wikipedia with their with their own students, and um, it's also a big difference because when you're doing teacher training, you're working with adults. And it's extremely, it's, it's different. It's not the same thing. It's very much more difficult to teach an adult something new than it is to teach students. I mean, a, a classroom of students, they'll sit on a bench. They've been doing that for the past five, six years. And they sit, they listen, they learn. And when you work with adults, it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It, it's, it's complicated. And um, I also started another typically school-related project which is uh, Latin Wikipedia, which I, I looked into. They call it Wikipedia, it's Latin, a Wikipedia in Latin. And Latin is taught in the junior high school in Geneva. And uh, 
I gave it a little try this year with a few colleagues and had very positive feedback, both from the teachers and from the students, because for once they were doing something fun and exciting in Latin. It wasn't just translating old texts. And that was, I found it very, very exciting. So I'm going to try it again next year on a much larger scale. And uh, I don't know if you see, there's a little uh, tiny data dock right here. I talked about it in Milano and asked if I could get any funding for my Latin project, and uh, the answer I got was definitely no. Five minutes left? Okay. The Wikimedia Foundation will not support Latin at all. There. And this SF, SF's answer was something more or less uh, be over my dead body, or I don't know what he said. Anyway, I still want to try Latin Wikipedia like that, and we'll see if it works. Now, Back to the project, we have five minutes. I'll try to speak faster. The, the lesson plan I use, uh, the way I do it, or the way I've been doing it recently is I start by, the angle I use is, is uh, searching information on the web. So we, I, I give out some kind of information or something that was in the news or something like that and, and ask the students to research it or to find out what it's about. And they go and they search, they search on, on search engines. A lot of them actually find their information on YouTube. So they go look at videos on YouTube. And then we compare the results in class, you know, the way we do it. And then we discuss the, the credibility, the credibility of the, the websites that they found. And it turns out that they always think that Wikipedia is the most credible website. It's not the first one they go to. They first go to YouTube, but then after they say, the, get better results on Wikipedia. So after we we look about how to use Wikipedia, how to use the different menus, uh, the search button, the internal links, and the different things like that, and basically how to use, if you're just a user, how to use the uh, encyclopedia, then uh, we get on to editing. So each student chooses a subject. They each create a uh, username and everything. And then I have certain guidelines for the subject that I tell them that it's something that they know, something they're used to, and they shouldn't take a very popular subject because if you take something that's very popular, the article is already like five pages or 10 pages long and there's nothing the students can add. So it should be something relatively short where they can add uh, information. If they want to really create an article that doesn't exist, well then we look into the, the notability guidelines, which are more or less severe depending on which uh, Wikipedia you're working with. Okay? Then afterwards they locate references for the information on the web, and then they start writing the article uh, using their own words, making it right. Okay? Because, because that actually takes a lot of time, because um, Using a word, learning how to use a word processor, learning how to use the editor in Wikipedia, it's not very difficult. It takes a couple of minutes, it takes 10 minutes, for the students understand 10 minutes. What is difficult is writing the text, is, is, is creating content. And that's that what takes time in this project. And there's a lot of there's a lot of proofreading. Because I work with 12-year-old students, sometimes they don't write very well, sometimes a lot of mistakes. So we do a lot of proofreading. And the students, they have a draft in their own personal space on Wikipedia. And I also help them find related articles, and I help them with the Wikify the article, like with links and so on. And um, once the article is more or less ready, or once I've uh, spent my allotted time, like three weeks, we then publish the article. And I help them fill in the categories and do the interwikis which is now a lot easier thanks to Wikidata because before we had to spend a bit of time finding the equivalent, equivalent articles on different language Wikipedias. Now with the Wikidata it's a lot easier. I just put a link to the English article and then it fills in by itself. And then we check back in a week or two. I say in a week or two because uh, we have a computer the course is once a week. So you know we do something one week and a week later we check see if it's still there and a week after if it's still there. Now, how do students relate to the project? Um, 
like I said before, we can be just not as cool as other websites. They, they prefer looking at YouTube or other things like that, or Twitter, or now Facebook. Facebook is, is still allowed in schools, it's not banned. Uh, but they think Wikipedia is definitely more serious. And um, once they finish their article, they're very, they're quite proud of what they did on Wikipedia, and they like to show it to other people. Um, there's some issues that I have to be very wary of, you know, as teacher in charge of this project, is that the students, you know, as contributors, they're like 12, 13 years old. They're very definitely minors, so I have to watch out for that. Meaning they should put absolutely no personal identification on, uh, on Wikipedia. If they want to come out of the closet or tell people who they are for real, they can do that once they're 18. That's their problem. And like I said, which is a cartoon I got, is on, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. But one minute left, that's great. And then one, uh, one thing I try to enforce is all discussions should take, page, take place on the talk pages. You know, if they want to talk to each other, not on Twitter or Facebook or other things. Um, and then the content, well, like I said, it takes a lot of work on my part to help them so that their work is not rejected like right after three seconds. And uh, that, 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 that takes time. And I also do not work with pictures. I work only with text. Because the copyright issues surrounding pictures are just too complicated to go into with students. So I, I don't even try. Unless they bring, if they took pictures with their own camera, I ask them to bring their camera or their smartphone to the computer lab and we download it from the camera or from the smartphone. That way we know it's they who took the picture. And that, that's okay, but otherwise there's no pictures. I think I'm more or less over. These are other similar programs that I'd be doing along the same line. Uh, so with college, that's with uh, college level students. I've been tutoring, teacher training. I've been able to negotiate access to my teacher training for the WHO staff in Geneva, who want to work with Wikipedia. So they can always sign up for my courses and uh, Latin Wikipedia, of course. Other Wikipedias exist, at least in the French language, specifically for children. There's one called Wikimini or Wikidia. But I don't work with those because it's my students feel that it's not real encyclopedia, it's not the real Wikipedia. Okay. So any questions? We have like five seconds left. Yes. And I have one request, which I repeat, because you mostly didn't hear it. I left a lot of Swiss chocolate here, which you can have. If you would please keep the little papers and throw them away, unless you collect them, then you can iron them flat and put them in your stamp book. But I mean don't throw them on the ground, please.
on the discussion page of my username, uh, up here, I have a link at the top of the project, Village de Colombière, and that way you can find <coughs> French. Sorry, that's just going to put it up. Okay, now 